here is what I've been reading, the Bible. And here <laughs> is a wimpy guy. He doesn't look strong. Well, here's a strong guy. He doesn't look wimpy. That's what I want to talk about first before I talk to you about what I've been reading in the Bible. The wimpy guy, how did he get to be so wimpy? No exercise. Well, you know. Why didn't he exercise? Wimpy didn't want to. Exercise is hard. It might hurt. It wasn't fun. It was uncomfortable. So he said, no, I'm not going to exercise. Strong guy. How did strong guy get to be strong? Exercise. He did exercise. Oh, why? Was exercise fun for strong guy? No. Exercise is hard. The strong guy knew that exercise might hurt. He knew that it was not comfortable. Strong guy knew that it was not fun. And strong guy knew that the exercise would make him strong. I wonder how strong guy knew about that. Maybe someone told him. Maybe someone gave him advice. Advice. It's like instruction, a suggestion. Someone saying, well, this is what you should do. And telling another person about that. When I was young, and I was, you know, shorter, younger, and I lived with my parents. Well, what we had happen was every afternoon we had a newspaper delivered to our porch. The newsboy, we called him a paper boy, would roll up the paper, throw it onto the porch, and I would go out and get the paper, the newspaper, I'd bring it in the house, and open it up, and my parents would read the news. But when I got the newspaper and opened it up, I would read the advice column named Dear Abby. Dear Abby. What would happen with that is, Abby was a woman who received letters in the mail from people asking her for advice. They would write about something that was going on in their lives and then they would ask Abby, what should I do about this? Why did they ask Abby? Someone had told them that Abby was wise and she would have good advice for them. So Abby would get the letter and she would read it. She would think about it. And then she would write a letter back to the person giving them advice on what to do with their problem. But Abby didn't put it in an envelope and send it in the mail back to them. She had it printed in one of the, oops, I'm sorry, in one of the columns, like that, in the newspaper, like that. The reason she did that is because the person who had the problem could read it and know what to do, and lots of other people could read it and know what to do if they had a problem like that sometime. Hmm. Okay, that's all that we, we don't need to look at the newspaper anymore. Let's talk about James. If we said hello to James, hello James, who are you? James will say to us, hello, I am a servant of God and a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wrote a letter to the Jewish Christians because they needed some advice. Then God had the letter of advice included in the Bible so that lots of other people can read the letter I wrote and know what to do about problems like that. That's like Dear Abby. 
And who was it that had the problems that James wrote about? The Jewish believers in the New Testament time. I will tell you some more things about James. He didn't say these about himself. But there's some really special things about James. You ready for the first one? Okay. James was the brother of Jesus. Did you know that Jesus had brothers and sisters while he was living on earth? The Bible tells us a little bit about them. We remember that God the Father is the Father of Jesus, who is God the Son. We remember that Jesus came to earth to be born as a baby so he could live on earth with people. We remember the mother of Jesus, Mary. Well, after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph were married and had children. So, Jesus was the oldest brother of younger brothers and sisters. And Jesus lived with them together like that in a family for 30 years. And then we know what he did after 30 years. He went out and traveled all around Israel, telling everybody about God's plan for salvation. And then we know that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. The Bible tells us that first, James and his brothers did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But after they saw Jesus be crucified on the cross, they saw Jesus be laid in a tomb, and then they saw Jesus rise up from the dead again three days later. Oh, then they realized that Jesus is the Messiah. After Jesus ascended into heaven, lots of Jewish people heard and believed the gospel message, and they joined together in churches. James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. We remember that when lots of Jewish people came, became believers, that Saul was real mean to them, trying to get them to stop believing in Jesus. Because Paul, he was Saul at that time, but Paul, we remember him, two names that he went by. Because Saul at that time was so mean, lots of the Jewish believers moved away from Jerusalem to live in other places. There's a part of the New Testament Bible that is called James. It is a letter that James wrote and sent to the Jewish churches who were living scattered around in different places. He wrote to help them know how they should think, how they should live as new believers in Jesus, to advise them, to give them advice, to tell them what to do about some of their problems. The Jewish people were used to the Old Testament commandments, but they were not yet real familiar with the grace of God and with living by faith. We know those words, grace and faith. Okay, so listen to what James wrote to the Jewish believers. First he said, be real happy when you have hard times. Oh, <laughs> that sounds a little strange. Having hard times usually makes us be sad or angry. James said, be happy. But he explained that right away. He said, when you are having the hard times, it is like a test for you. Like an exercise you get to experience. The test, the experience, the exercise, is to make you strong. So, the test is hard. But the results are good. James said, when they endured, endured means to keep on going, keep on doing what you're supposed to, even when it's hard, even when it gets harder and harder. He said, let that hard experience change you. Let it make you become more like Jesus, not wimpy and afraid but strong, and he said, and complete. Show me a little wimpy look, like wimpy shoulders and wimpy face. Uh -huh. 
Oh yeah, you look pretty, you look wimpy. Yeah. Now show me a strong and complete person. Hmm. Yeah, good. Look how strong you look. It's better, James told them, to be strong than to be wimpy. And then James said, if you don't really know how to live, how to decide things, how to be wise in choices, ask God. God has all the wisdom. He likes to give you wisdom. But, said James, don't be wimpy and afraid when you ask God. Don't think, oh, God will probably not do this for me. <laughs> James said, if you think God will give you nothing, if God will not give you wisdom, what you will get is nothing. <laughs> right? We know that good word faith, it means believing Jesus, trusting God. That's what James says. He says, ask God and trust God. And James said, Every good gift comes from God. Does that mean that every time you have a birthday and you get birthday presents and you get to unwrap them, and, or at Christmas time you get Christmas presents, you get to unwrap them, does that mean that God mailed those to you? No. James is talking about all the gifts that we have provided for us that we need for life. Sunshine, rain, bodies that we can walk around in, food, to feed those bodies, brains, minds that we can think. Everything that's beautiful, like the flowers and the trees and the water and the sky and the stars, every good and beautiful gift, he said, comes from God. That was good for the Jewish believers to be reminded of, but James had lots more encouraging for them in this letter. Next, James gave them this advice, he said, be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to be angry. <laughs> Being angry is not good. It's better to be slow and not really jump into that right away. And it's good to be quick to listen. That means listen first, don't start talking first. If some other people are telling you things and you listen, you might hear something Real good. You might hear something important. You might hear some new things. If you are quick to just do all the talking, you will just hear the things that you already know. And people might stay away from you. <laughs> they might say, put your hands over your ears and say, stop talking so much. <laughs> stop talking so much. So, James said, not to do that. Really, you know, it can be hard to stop talking so much and to listen first. Like a hard exercise. And James said more about talking. He said, control your tongue. What does your tongue do? It does a lot of things, but one of the main things is it talks. James said, don't let your tongue say things that are not pleasing to God. And he said, even if you're thinking of something that to say that's not pleasing to God, just do this. Close your mouth and control that tongue. He said, don't say it. Controlling our tongues makes everyone happier. Controlling our tongues is also like doing a hard exercise. Sometimes we really want to talk first. Now, James said, don't show favoritism. Favoritism means that you decide ahead of time what you like and what you don't like, and you're only kind and nice to what you like and what you don't like. You're, you're not kind and nice to that. James was talking about people, about being kind or unkind to people. He said, if you see a rich people come into your church, this is what you've been doing. You say to them, come and sit right here in this special place. He said, it's because you look at them and you see they're pretty. You see they've got real nice clothes and some jewelry and their hair.
hair is pretty and they probably smell pretty and squirting stuff on themselves. And then he said, but what you've been doing when somebody comes in who is not so pretty, you can tell they're not rich because their clothes are not new, their hair is maybe not pretty and maybe they don't smell very good. So what you say to them is, um, you can just sit on the floor or you can go over there and just stand over there like kind of out of our way. James said he could tell that when people do that it means that they didn't want to be friends with those people. It just didn't seem good enough. James said that's not the way God is. That's not the way God thinks and not the way God loves. He said God loves everyone exactly the same if they are rich or poor or pretty or not pretty. He said, this is how we are to be loving and welcoming to people just like God is. God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus, to earth to die for us, for every person, because he loves every person. He does not love some people more than other people. God says, you are to love people the way he loves. That can be hard. That's a hard exercise. He says to do it. And James says, don't just hear God's words. Do them. Hearing about right and wrong won't help anything. We have to do it. James had a fun way of explaining that. He said, it's like when you go and look in a mirror and you see yourself and then you walk away and you forget what was there. He means like, well, what if you look in the mirror and there's, oh, there's like mud over there and over there and it's real messy and dirty and then you just walk away and you don't ever think again about what you saw on your face. Like, mud? What mud? I don't remember any mud. James said, fix it. Whatever you see, Whatever you recognize by hearing God's advice, and you recognize it's on you, fix it, like washing your face. James said that when we love like God loves, it's obeying his royal law. He was talking about the instruction in the Bible that says, love other people as much as you love yourself. If we show favoritism, nice to some people and not nice to the other people, he said, it's like you're breaking all of God's law. We may think that we're doing fine, but James says no, if we don't love like God does. James knew that people are saved by believing God and believing everything God says by believing Jesus. But James was saying, this is my advice because it's God's advice love the way God loves. James had lots to say to the Jewish believers, like Paul had lots to say to the Gentile believers. James and Paul gave good advice. So why are we reading about that? Why are we talking about that? Because the Bible says that everything that's written in the Bible is written for us, so we can learn. Now, do we learn everything at once? No, not at all. We learn things a little at a time, every day. So as we learn things, it's like exercising. We get stronger in what we're learning. So we need to know who should we learn from? Who has the best advice? The people who wrote the Bible have the best advice. Why? Because God told them what to write. Okay, are you all ready for hard exercise? Ready to become strong? Good. You know where to get the advice to follow? Here, in the Bible. Let's do it. <laughs>